Um, Joshua 24, 13 through 15, and then verse 22. Amen. And if you, uh, Joshua 24, 13 through 15, and verse 22. Amen. Amen. Are we there? Let us read together. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them. Of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then verse 22. Amen. Let's read. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. We've been talking through this series from the theme, uh, The Path to Possession, right? Amen. And to briefly recap, the first sermon title in that series is The Path to Possession. That covered chapters 1 through 8. And the second sermon title in that series is The Path to Possession, Fumble, and Recovery. Y'all got that? Yeah, well, help me then, help me. Y'all sounded like y'all forgot. That's chapter 7 and 8. And the third installment in this series is the path to possession. The Lord God fought for Israel. Amen. That's chapters 9 and 10, right? Amen. And then last Sunday's installment was the path to possession, connecting the dots. That covered chapters 11 and 12. Amen. So we're going from chapter 13 to chapter 24 today. And some of y'all saying, oh, Lord. <laughs> it's not going to take that long. Yeah, it's not going to take that long. Um, because some of it you can read on your own. Um, The path to possession, hyphen, when we know better, when we know better, um, you, many of you have no doubt heard me um, recount many times um, my, my mother's, our mother's um, two distinct um, types of whippings. Yeah. Amen. In the process of raising all of us and, and being a great wife to her husband, um, we do mischievous things. Amen. We just, sometimes we do dumb things. It's, it's dumb. Sometimes we 
get in fights with one another. And uh, when Mama discerned that the intent was not malicious, it wasn't um, premeditated. Amen? It was impulsive. You don't think, you just do a dumb thing. And as soon as you do it, you start saying, Lord, have mercy on me. But mama would send us to get a switch, which was usually a plum switch or a peach switch. And if they were skinny, she would plait them. She would braid them together because the switches didn't break. If they broke, then you had to go get another switch. Amen. That's like going to choose your own casket. That's a, but, but anyway, um, and, and Mama would just grab us by the hand and chop us a few times and, and tell us, you know, not to do that again and, and let us go with a good one on the backside. Uh, um, and then there were some things we did that Mama knew were malicious. They were dirty things. Now, okay, so y'all didn't do them dirty things as kids, but all right, but we, we did some we did some stuff we shouldn't have done. And <laughs> and um, Mama would send us to get the switch. And um, Lord, our poor Mama. Um, and then she grabbed us by the hand, but this time she wouldn't. You know, she had to kind of sing it to us. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> she would be, while she was chopping, she'd be singing, and there was a rhythm to it. There was a cadence to it. Yeah, and 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 then she would always end that this kind of whipping with these words: "I'm not whipping you for what you did, but I'm whipping you because you knew better." Now, get out of my face before I kill you. Those were my mama's words. <laughs> that second kind of whipping was a whole lot more severe than the first kind. That first kind, you got a few licks and, you know, you were back out there and, you know, you know. But, but that second one, yeah, yeah, mama not just, she didn't just, the switch didn't just speak to your body. Amen. Mama spoke to your spirit. Amen. M Mama was, in other words, Mama was saying, I didn't raise you to live like that. I didn't raise you to treat one another like that. I didn't raise you to act like a fool like that. So she was not only uh, um, uh, putting some punishment on our hide, she was speaking to our spirits, saying that. Now, where, where does this come from? No, no, this ain't my child acting like this. Lord, that we could have a little more of that rather than us running to rescue these scamps who disrespect us, talk back to us, suck head, turn, eye, turn up that device that you bought them so they can't hear you. And take the plug out the air and the air. What are we doing? But mama was saying, boy, you acting like you ain't got good sense. You are behaving Contrary to the values of this family. And I'm trying to stop you now. Because if you don't stop now, there's trouble down the road for you. So thank God for every time mama gave one of them whippings and said, I ain't whipping you for what you did. 
but I'm whipping you because you knew. And it is that tenor, is that flavor with which we proceed in these few words today. Um, Israel had been instructed by God that he gave them the land on the other side of Jordan. Right? Got that right? So their inheritance was trans-Jordan. If that's the case, why did two and a half of them tribes settle on the east side? Already disobedient. They went over the Jordan to help the rest win the land. But they went back to what God did not promise them. When we know better. Israel was blessed to cross Jordan, to encounter Jericho, amen, to take the city without one blow. The walls tumble. To take Ai, amen, to suffer the, the, the deceit. Of the Gibeonites. Yes. Amen. Amen. Gibeonites were supposed to be dead. God said, take the land and kill them. <laughs> Amen. 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 Then God fights when they go after the, the five southern kings. Amen. Amen. Then, but every time he was getting stronger and stronger. Amen. And, and, and last Sunday we were talking about connecting the dots. There were 31 kings. Amen. 31. And God gave Israel the victory. There was yet unconquered land. Amen. Joshua, being led of the Lord, started distributing the land. Amen. So chapters 13 through 19 mm -hmm. talk about land distribution. If you want to get the details, read it. Amen. All right? Amen. Land distribution. When we started reading the scripture early, I said, man, can we, can we hear ourselves we're living on land we didn't buy. Amen. Some of us living in houses we didn't build. Amen. We, <laughs> Some of us driving cars we didn't put pay notes on. Amen. I mean, God has blessed us and blessed us and blessed us and blessed us. And he didn't bless us in ignorance. He gave us his standards. And he said, do these things. And we received his blessings. Just like Israel. We obeyed. And we obey in part. Amen. Now I've heard some people say partial, amen, partial obedience is disobedience. <laughs> if, if, if I was told rake the front yard and I just rake left of the sidewalk, 
I was in disobedience. Because the instruction was rake the front. And I know the boundaries of the front yard. Are we communicating? Clean your room. Does not mean kicking dirty stuff under your bed. All of a sudden, after a few weeks, you got this aroma arising that ain't even human. <laughs> Clean your room means pull it out. Y'all good. All you got to do is pull out dirty stuff. You don't know nothing about the washboard, right? Oh, okay. All you got to do is pull it out so somebody else can put it in. Partial obedience is disobedience. Have you completed your homework? Yes, ma'am. And you pull out the bath homework. Well, what about the science? Or the English? <laughs> oh, partial obedience. Anyway, they went on in Israel. They got their pieces of land with a big chunk of them in blatant disobedience. Let me make this little point. If God hated Israel, if disobedience would make God hate Israel, he had every right to eliminate them. If disobedience would make God despise his chosen people. They gave him every right to disinherit them and choose another people. Amen. Now I said that A, because it's biblically true. I said it B, because it's existentially true. If our mamas and daddies despised us for disobedience. We would have been history. And if your mamas and daddies are we communicating? Love is so powerful. That sometimes it has to issue a, a correction. But it will not utterly destroy. How do you correct behavior and not crush the spirit? Because some behavior needs to be corrected. Amen. But you don't want somebody to give up on life because they're corrected. Amen. So they got all their land. And then after they got the land divvied up, chapter 20 talks about these cities of refuge. I, I can't recall the man's name, but he, sang, he used to sing a lot of old spirituals uh, with no music. He was a preacher in the Atlanta area back in the 50, 50s and 60s. But one of the spirituals was, you better run, better run, better run. You better run, better run, run, better run. You better run to the city of refuge. You better run. And then it goes on saying, my mother had to run, had to run. Cities of refuge 
were mercy seats. God had them to create places where a person who unwittingly or unintentionally did something could run from the vengeance of the offended family. So if somebody ain't shooting at somebody but they accidentally hit somebody or, 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 or yo, 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 your animal kicks somebody in the head and they die. Mm -hmm. They could run to a city of refuge. And when they got in the boundaries of the city of refuge, no harm would come to them. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Amen. It ensured justice. Amen. By providing havens for people who had done wrong. How many times have you and I been spared because the Lord allowed us to get to a city of refuge? Oh, boy. I know when saints get together, we like to talk about how good we are and how great we are, but I ain't, I ain't talking about that right now. I'm talking about what scamps we were. I'm talking about what repeat offenders we were. I'm talking about how low we got. I'm talking about us knowing better but not doing better. I'm talking about us walking into craziness with our eyes wide open. We knew it was a snake. It was a venomous snake. We picked that joker up. We flirted with it. It bit us. Some of us were stupid enough to go get another snake. But thanks be unto God. He created cities of refuge. Where we could run and get built back up in him. Have our spirits renewed. Glory to God. Why did God do that? He did it because in spite of the reality that we did wrong, he knew our hearts. And he knew that in our hearts we knew better than to do the contrary thing we did. And he knew if I give them another chance, they'll come back to me and try to do it better this time. Oh, man. And I know this is boring to, to the goody-goody two-shoes who ain't never done nothing. You ain't never thought nothing. I know, this, I know this is a boring ceremony, but for the rest of us, amen, this is eggs and grits. This the real deal right here. Because I see if it wasn't for them cities of refuge, amen, we'd have been wiped off the map. If it wasn't for them cities of refuge, we'd have lost our mind. If it wasn't for those cities of refuge, the devil would have consumed us. If it wasn't for those cities of refuge, the devil would have taken everything away from us. But even when we acted like a fool in our heads, God regarded his presence in our hearts. And he provided a city of refuge. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. You better run to the city of refuge. You better run where the devil can't take you out. You better run where he can't reach you to destroy you. You better run. Because he knew our hearts. How many of us were contrary in our heads when our hearts knew better? I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to touch it anyway. I'm going to take peace anyway. I want that anyway. And God was saying, you big dummy. 
but he is extending mercy. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the cities of refuge, this building would be empty today. If it wasn't for the cities of refuge, somebody else would be holding this mic right now. Somebody else would be sitting in your seat right now. Somebody else would be playing your rap, your instrument right now. But because of the cities of refuge, because of the mercy of God, because he held back his wrath, glory to God, hallelujah, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. You better run. Ain't no sense in sitting around acting like you don't need to run. Run. Ain't no sense in act, sitting around acting like you don't know you were wrong. You were wrong. Run. Ain't no sense in around, sitting around acting like you don't need mercy. You need mercy. Run. Now I ain't going to ask you to tell nobody because that might be insulting. But ask somebody near you, you need to run. Now, if you know you're in a situation where you need some of the mercy of God sprinkled on your life, then you can tell that same person, I don't know about you, but I need to run. I need to run to the city. Of I need to run. I don't want God to give me what I deserve right now. I need to run. I need to run. I need to run. I need to run. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hasina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I'm going right on. I'm rushing toward the end. Chapter 21, the Levites, the ministering people, were given cities. Amen. 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 Churches need to take this in consideration. Amen. When you want people to minister, amen, you need to provide them cities. That's another day, another way. But it's right there in chapter 21. Read it for yourself. Cities meaning means. Amen. Then chapters 22 and 23. Joshua's last message. And we're going to call it a message. But he did it in two parts. Chapter 23. He addressed the leaders. And we leaders just have to face the, the reality that although we don't always come up to par, uh, we do have a greater degree of accountability. Amen. 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 And I know uh, folk who aren't in positions of leadership often say, well, they need to let me do that. I can do better than so-and-so. Well, maybe you've got some skills and you have some knowledge that ought afford you or ought empower you to do certain things with some measure of efficiency and effectiveness. But leaders are supposed to be anointed for the positions they hold. Now if you got the position and you ain't got the anointing, the most gracious thing you can do is slide on 
You know what I'm saying? You got to have an anointing to lead. You, you can't be tissue paper soft where you want to lead. You got to, you got to learn how to suffer insults because the cause is greater than the person. You, you got to learn how to suffer rejection. Yeah, yeah. You got, <laughs> you got to learn sometimes the very folk you help will be the ones who, you know, but that, that come with the territory. Amen. Amen. So maybe, maybe somebody got more knowledge and they, they, they got charisma and all. But do they have the anointing for the position? Amen. You can't be a bull in a china closet if you're a leader. You can't just walk around huffing people like they, like you chopping wood. If you, <laughs> you, you, you got to know how to work with people. Every person isn't alike. You can't talk exactly the same way to some people, to different people. You got to have an anointing for that. Lots of times people might say, well, say of the people that they lead, well, they know me. And, and that's important. But even more important is, do you know them? Joshua called the leaders together, yes. and he gave them certain instructions, and I, I will capsulize them. He told them, be faithful, in chapter 23, amen, amen, amen. He, he said, you're going to possess the land, cleave to the Lord, yes. that's in chapter, in verse 8, take good heed that you love the Lord. He said, cleave to him, be faithful to the Lord, and then love him. Love him. I believe there are lots of church folk. There are a lot of church people who really don't love the Lord. They like the energy of church, just like some people like the energy of the club. Some people like the energy of church. That ain't clear, huh? I need to find another way to say that. Some people just like what happened in church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some people like what happened on the corner. Some people like what happened in Walmart. They don't need not not Walmart. They just like what happened in Walmart. They, they like Walmart energy. <laughs> That's why you got all them bags and stuff you ain't using. Because <laughs> you ain't going because you need you going because you like the energy. Amen. But I'm telling you, you got you to gotta have the anointing. And you got to love the Lord. You got to love the Lord. And if you love the Lord, the love of God will constrain you yes. to love the people. Yes. Not some of the people. You love the ones you don't like. They might have some hateful ways. They might be moody. They might be, you know, they go around you to keep from speaking to you. That. You ain't got nothing to do with that. You just love them. They may deposit those hateful things in, pla in places where they know you're going to get it. But you don't pay no attention to that. You just love them. That's your part. I know. I just, I just don't feel the love. Do you give any? He said, be faithful, yes. love God, yes. and stay separated from the world. Yes. Not this church in particular, although inroads have, people have tried to make inroads, but they ain't going to work. 
churches have begun to think because churches hire unsaved marketing people to teach us how to perform right, right. so we can win members for the church, not souls for the kingdom, but members for the church through performance. They do. What you need to do is do this and do this to appeal to them and do this to appeal to them and do that. Biggest church, was the biggest church in America. Did a survey and asked the, asked the members what you want us to preach or not preach about. People said, don't preach about sin. They don't preach about sin in that church. So when you talk about being separated from the world, even among leadership, it can be a challenging subject. I believe because lots of time the leadership still got a foot in the world. He said, stay, he told the leaders, stay separated from the world, from those, the people whose land I gave you, don't marry them. He told the leaders, the leaders, He ain't talked to the whole congregation yet, just the leaders. Why he had to tell the leaders this? Evidently because the leaders weren't now I don't want no letters, I don't want no phone calls. You direct them straight to God, P.O. Box 000, heaven. <laughs> Zip code zero 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 zero. We sent them all up there. But he told the leaders, stay separate. Stay separated. It's right there in the chapter. Right? Oh boy. I, I feel a little bit of disbelief in the atmosphere. From verse 11 down of 23, take good heed therefore unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Else if, you, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, go back and cleave to what I gave you the victory over. Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. You can mix it, but you're going to lose. Oh, man. I'm going to read verse 16, and I'm going on. Of that same chapter, when you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given you. Then he calls the whole group of people together. Amen? Amen. 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 And he um, reminds them of how God changed them from heathen to godly. Amen. Amen. He, he went all the way back to Abraham and them daddy who served them strange gods 
on the other side of the river. He, he went all the way, he, he went all the way back and, and showed them how God pulled them out. Uh, um, he said, Abe from the other plot side of the flood and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac and, and, and God gave him deliverance out of Egypt. Amen. Doesn't that sound so right now? Amen. If I were to poll people in here right now, Anybody who's been living saved a little while will have to say, yep, yeah, God delivered me from something. He delivered me from some circumstance, some situation. Something was consuming me. I was losing my mind. I was losing my, pers my perspective. I lost my joy, but God delivered me. And He's, he's in verse 6 following. He said, I brought your fathers out of Egypt and came to the sea. The Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. They cried unto the Lord. He put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the seas upon them, covered them. Your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwell in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you to the land of the Amorites, which dwell on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that you might possess the land. I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab. I'm reading this stuff that sounds boring because sometimes you just need to go back and rehearse what the Lord has done. Amen. A rose and warred against you. Had some things and some people to war against you. They didn't, they didn't have a just reason, but they warred against you. Amen. And sent them and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of the, his hand. And you went over Jordan and came to Jericho. And, and the men of Jericho fought against you. The Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. Amen. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave, drove them, drave them out of the, before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword nor with thy bow. All, 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 all Joshua will do and say, Israel, y'all know better. Y'all know better. And I, not only did I do all of that, but I have given you a land for which you did not labor. Some of y'all living on heirs' property and don't want to help pay the tax. I ain't going to dwell on that long today, but I'm saying that's mighty trifling. Amen. 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 Where are you going to stay for free? Amen. Would you rather somebody else get your family land and you soon can't go back on the land that was your family land? Would, would you prefer that? Amen. Some are so crazy. We, we fighting the people we ought to be working with. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, cities which you did not build, and ye dwell in them, and vineyards and olive yards, which ye ha you have not planted. You, you eating um, grapes and, 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 and plucking olives that you didn't plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And why does Joshua, in the last chapter, have to say this next sentence to Israel. In his waning years, he's about to go and die. He's rapid. This is his valedictory address. After he talks about all that God did for Israel, why does Joshua have to say? Uh, now fear the Lord your God and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. Because he knew that there were people in Israel who knew better but weren't doing better. 
He knew there were people who, had, who could remember the deliverance, who could remember being in bondage, not being in bondage, but they could remember their, grand, their parents and grandparents are in bondage. He could, re, he could remember all the history of Israel from the calling of Abraham. And after rehearsing all of this history, he said, y'all still serving the gods from over there. What gods are we serving today? What are, we, what, what are the things people getting hung up on today that's blurring their vision of God? Now, many of these things in and of themselves are not bad. But when they blur our vision of God, and when we don't see them as blessings from God, but we see them as substitutes for God, the money, the house, the land, the title, of it, no, that's good. But when we worship those things, we worship the creation and ignore the creator. And we know better. He said, put them away and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, at the end of Joshua's days, he still got to tell, rather than saying, come on, children, let's serve the Lord. Joshua has to say, choose ye this day. There's something really serious about that. And I say to us, when we start looking individually, personally, and aggregately, congregationally, collectively, at how much God has done for us. Does somebody still have to say to us, choose ye this? Does somebody, does somebody still have to say, choose God? When we can remember all that God has done. Does somebody still have to tell you honor your mom and daddy? When you can remember all your mom and daddy have done and are doing for you. But, but, but Joshua has to tell the children of Israel, not the heathens, but the children of God. Choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers that were on the other side of the flood. That's pre-Noah. Now they know what it got for them. It got a flood. But some people still following them gods. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Then Joshua said, I'm your leader. But I can only speak for my house. I, I led all of y'all. But I still can't speak for you. I know you know what's right. But I can't speak for you. Joshua, Joshua wound up saying, but as for me and my house. And while that sounds a little disconcerting, I think that there's something, a powerful lesson in that, that and I'm going to just wrap up with that. The way we going to turn this adverse wave around the way we're going to reverse this curse that's bringing a scourge on our neighborhoods and our families. Amen. I don't care how good our families are. The devil is finding a way to find one or two jokers in them families who do anything, say anything. They ain't got no limit. They ain't got no respect. They don't respect. what the Holy
Holy Ghost is saying today is since we know better. Don't try to paint with such a wide brush. Let everybody just speak for his or her house. I would want to say that everybody in Bethesda would see the goodness of the Lord and cleave to him, but I can't say that. But I believe we can resurrect things. I believe we can rescue our families and communities if each house would say, look, I can't control nobody else. But as for me, in my house. Now, I, look, look, y'all can, y'all can provide all the liquor. Y'all can provide the crack. You can even have a little outhouse where people can go and do their stuff. But as for me and my house, I can't control you. You can have, you can come with your stuff in the trunk of the car. You just can't bring it on my land. But as for me and my house, and then the people like to remind you of what you used to do when you start taking a stand. Now, oh, were well, you so holy now? Well, yeah, yeah, yes. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh, you so saved. Now, well, thank you for noticing. You need to know, you need to have a response for them demons who want to remind you of your errors of the past. You need to remind, yeah, 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 I did a lot of things back there that I ain't proud of, but thanks be unto God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't control your house, sister. I cannot control your house, brother, but as for me and my house. You'll never have peace in your house accommodating the devil. I remember when you used to smoke. Yeah, I remember too. But as for me in my house, you ain't smoking up here. I remember you used to drink a bud. Yeah, but you know the bud coming up here now. You come, but not the bud. As for me. And the reason I feel a fight to get this atmosphere, even in this building right now, is because some of y'all want the best of God, and you want the best of the world. And you'll say, well, yeah, I'm saved, but I ain't like, I ain't stuck up like that. I can still have people drink around my house, and it don't affect me. But that's holy ground. You ask God for that. You ask the whole church to pray for you to get that house. You ask the whole church to pray for you to get that car. And now you prostituting it, letting people bring up. Yeah, baby, a whole lot used to happen up in here, but now, as for me, in my house or oh, it's like that yeah or oh, you gonna be like that yeah or oh, you gonna treat me like that I ain't treat you like nothing I'm just saying it just the way it is yeah because we know better and I believe if one or two houses in each community started lifting Jesus the way we should I believe we can start because when one or two start, other folk will feel encouraged to do it. If one or two houses start saying, I ain't ashamed, this is a Christian house here. This is a sanctified house here. I ain't ashamed. Y'all need to know. I believe that it becomes infectious. And sooner or later, another home will join. And another home will join. And another home will join. Because we know better. Now, I'm done. I do know, because I, I can feel the spirits of some of you. Um, and I know some of y'all, this last part of this message kind of troubling you. and You're wondering what authority I have to say how we ought to do. I just stand on what the word says. Kenneth Doe. All I can do is speak for my house. That's all I can do. Um, but I'm telling you, you're hurting yourself. You're 
hurting yourself. And you, like many others of us, you have to get to the point where you realize you, you can't keep shooting yourself in the, in the foot and think that you're going to run this race well. You got to realize that you aren't going to win the world by accommodating them. They may give you the blues. They may not come to your house a couple holidays. They may give you a bad name. But let me tell you what you want. You want them to respect you. What I need you to come to my house for, eat up my food, and smell up my house, and you don't respect me. Go on, go on. Like my mama was, used to say, I'd rather your room than your company. As for me, that house, that, that same house, the Lord bless me. You already testified. The Lord bless us with a house. You already testified. And now, well, the path to possession Amen. means we got to always pursue doing better yeah. when we know better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I don't care what you've done. Yeah. God is a forgiving God. Yeah. And if you ask him, he will forgive you. Glory to God. Amen. So I take this time to first appeal to those who need to say, Lord, forgive me for whatever. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, forgive me for accommodating what I knew wasn't right or doing what I knew wasn't, wasn't right or whatever it is. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. That's an ongoing process, y'all. See, we, we can ask the Lord to forgive us today. Amen. And the enemy will look for a new way to try to bring you down before the day is over. Amen. So you can't do it. A lot of people get saved and ask the Lord to forgive them one day and, and they think they have to do it. You've got to renew this thing every day. Every day. So... Because we want to avoid any uh, any uh, undue pain, agony, disturbance, confusion. You know, let's just ask the Lord today, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. I don't need to know your whole story. I don't need to know what it's all about. All I want to know is, are you willing to say, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me, heal me, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me? Hallelujah. And then when we've done that, then we are in a better shape to call the ungodly. To call those who are who've never given their lives to Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all can stay in choir and in an audience if you want. Um, you would think that at the end of them securing um, at the end of Joshua because they had not conquered all the land yet there was still some land to be conquered but, but you would think at the end of Joshua's life they would be able to look back and say man oh man oh man Israel God is something else and we have held on to him and, and we thank the Lord for allowing us to be bright shining examples of godliness they couldn't say that at the end of his life Joshua had to say y'all need to choose y'all need to choose he was just saying it's life or death 
It's blessings or curses. You need to choose. It's life or death. It's blessings or curses. You need to choose. Please be not deceived. Yes, blessings can come in, in, in the form of things, in the form of money, in the form of prestige. But those things can also be curses. Money, prestige, name, notoriety can be just as much a curse as a blessing. It just depends on who gave it to you. The devil will give you stuff too, you know. He'll give you stuff just to numb you. So you don't call on the name of the Lord anymore. You, you get to the point where you don't think you need the Lord anymore. I don't need all of that. I don't need, I don't, I don't need all of that. I'm, I'm inviting all who and any who would want to give your life to Christ to receive him as your personal savior today to please come make that decision please come and do it now please come if you're at home you can come right now wherever you are if you're at work you can come right now you can call right after the benediction a couple of our ministers will be there glory to God to answer the phone and to, to minister to your situation. Glory to God. Amen. If you are what we call backslidden, which means you did establish relationship with God through Jesus Christ, but uh, through bad company, bad decisions or whatever, you just haven't been living like it. And you realize you need to correct that. Then please, now is the time to come. Whether you're here in the building or whether you're at home or incarcerated or in the hospital or amen and some other kind of facility, whatever it is, wherever you are, the Lord is there. And you can be as free there as you can be anywhere else. If you just need to rededicate yourself, recommit yourself to the cause of Christ. Now is an excellent time to do that. Yes, Lord. Amen. Now I know this kind of message kind of goes like this. Th this message really kind of digs deep. And it's the kind of message that in our flesh we'd be saying, well, Pastor, please hurry up because I need, I, I need to deal with some stuff, but I need to get out of church. I don't even want to deal with this in church. But I'm telling you, the presence of God, of God is here so heavily. And I'm telling you, he, he didn't come to beat you down. He came to lift you up. Glory to God. And nobody here is here to condemn you. Nobody here is here to, to, to browbeat you. We are here to tell you, you can make it happen. You can turn this thing around. Uh, uh, the end of your story can be a whole lot better than the first part of it. But you got to rededicate yourself. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I'm going to just ask for this and then I'm going to go on and pray. Because I really want to really pray for, for, for our children today too. Um, but I, I almost feel like I'm spitting into the wind if I pray for the children and don't address the parents. mamas and daddies you got one shot at raising these children one shot it used to be when they left home and came back that they were grown but some of them things grown before they even leave your house now so you got one little window parent those children Parent them in godliness. You don't want to want to want to raise worldly wise children who go into hell. Get over yourself. Ego issues are at the root of the corruption of the family. 
when people start saying, well, I need to be happy. What about me? What about, look, uh-uh. Them the things, that, that's the list you check off before you get married and start having them churn. Because you get the churn now, ain't, it's about what you got to do to raise some godly churn. you I want our children your, when last your child saw you praying I saw you bow your head to look like you were praying do you insist on them saying a prayer before they go to bed but you don't have a prayer record with them When last have, has a need come up and rather than just saying I can't do it or I can't do it, when last you tell, tell your child, come on, come on, let's sit around this table. We're going to pray about this thing. I'm going to pray and you're going to pray. Let's pray for the Lord to make a way. We got to model it for them. We model athletics for them. Y'all model how the girl can wear them sexy clothes. Y'all model all of that. Model these children how to be godly. You're raising people. You ain't raising animals. You're raising human beings. So, I'm going to ask children now and all I can do is ask you because you ain't my children although I feel like all of y'all are my children but I'm asking y'all children to come on to the altar we got a nice long wide altar Children, um, I ain't picking on y'all. But I know the enemy has a plan for you. The enemy has a plan for you. And I also know that our culture, our culture is pouring so much attitude into you. Y'all exposed to so much information. Y'all so smart young people. You are smart. But that attitude thing. That, and, you know, I think even people my age, we had episodes where we might have said things or, or behaved unseemly to toward our parents but I'm y'all y'all know my spot I go out the back door through the backyard through the garden past the barn to the hog pen and I talk it over with the hogs because <laughs> I was not gonna disrespect my mom and daddy like that <laughs> but it wasn't that I didn't think it or that I didn't feel it children y'all content y'all fighting against stuff I don't know about you're dealing with influences that are foreign to me they really are so I can't say I know everything you're facing but I am saying I know you can make it I am saying I have great hope for you we can't send off to another planet and get another crop of children. Y'all the children God gave us. And so you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to be the leaders. One of you has to be holding this mic very soon. One of you has to be in every position in this church, every position in government. You got to be in every position that we are now in. You got to fill it and that has to happen soon.
has to happen soon. And I've just got great hope for the Holy Spirit of God to get beyond the attitudes and beyond all of that that the world is poisoning, is the poison that the world is putting into you or making available to you. And I'm praying for the Lord to lift you up on the victory side. I'm praying for the Lord to lift you up on the victory side. I'm praying for the Lord to lift you up on the victory side. I know you are a work in progress. You are the product of works in progress. I don't expect you to be squeaky. I don't expect you to be flawless. But I expect you to be better. better why because you know better you know better parents if you have a human being That you can't get to clean up, clean themselves, know their surroundings. You can't get them to take any responsibility in the welfare of the household. How much sense does it make for you to be planning to give them a whole vehicle to drive? The Bible says you got to be faithful in a little to become a ruler over much if you can't handle the little responsibilities then why in the world and nobody with good sense would you have proven to me you are irresponsible I want you to show me you can handle it and then incrementally we'll move it on up those things don't come just because you get of age to do it those things come because you are spiritually mature enough that when somebody says go to the store for me you won't end up 15 miles away with three other people riding in that car y'all are wonderful children you are wonderful you are really wonderful I'm just coming against that spirit that's trying to steal you from us. I'm coming against that spirit. 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 And there are children out there over the airwaves. Amen. Call them in the room. Call them in the room. Take, tell them, take them plugs out their ears. They need to hear what's coming across the TV right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If they drag their feet, give them a quickening. I'm telling you, it's do or die. If you die today, who is going to empower these out of control children? Who's going to put up with what you're putting up with? Sure, y'all better pray that the people who are raising you live because ain't nobody going to put up with what you've been putting down. And no, ain't nobody on the planet going to fool with all of that. So you better pray for them to live a long time. They got systems, you know. Don't you know the larger culture has already counted you out? Especially y'all boys. The larger culture is depending on you failing. I'm telling you. Parents, I appreciate y'all. Those of you who step up to the plate and you're raising your children the best you can, even if you're a single parent. You're doing the best you can. 
Maybe you are a parent, you stepped in and you've become the parent. I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. Um, sisters, if you need help with these boys, get, get men, not, uh, not your man, because your man don't want your boy, your man wants you. Get some godly men who can teach these boys how to be men. You ain't the first one. My grandmama raised two boys by herself. You can do it. But she had nephews almost her age and she had brothers who helped her. I know. I know I'm taking, I'm taking longer than y'all might want to think is necessary. But if we can rescue these children, it's worth, it's worth every discomfort. If we can make sure our children make it all right. Yeah. You worth it, children. That's, what, that's all I'm trying to say. You are worth, you're getting up in the morning, going to work. You worth, amen, every sacrifice your parents make for you. Worth it, but then you got to believe it. When you get ready to leave the house as young adults, nobody needs to have to ask you, choose ye this day. Your mom and daddy need to know who you're going to serve when you go off to college or off in the military or off on a job. They need to know that, that you're going to be a godly young man or young woman. Well, I'm going to pray. Mm. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Keep, keep my tongue to speak thy praise. Keep and that, is, that, that needs to be your prayer as you try to raise these children. Oh, keep my heart Lord and keep my hand Keep my soul I pray mm -hmm. he, my tongue I want to speak thy Now 
God, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we magnify you. Oh God, we exalt you, God. Oh God, we notice your worth today in the name of Jesus. So we worship you, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we just bow before you, God, in the humblest way we know, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we, have, we confess that we come just like our parents came. We come as bad children before a good parent, Lord. We come as empty pitchers before a full fountain, God. Oh, God, sometimes we did it on purpose. Sometimes we did it in ignorance. But God, we've sinned against you. God, we need you to wash us. We need you to cleanse us. We need our minds regulated, God. We need to be tweaked. We need to be rebooted, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help us today. Help us today, God. Help us today, God. Help us today, God. Oh, God. And Lord, we pray. We pray, Lord. We pray for these children, God. Children in this building, children over the airwaves, children in our school systems. We pray, Lord, for children, Lord, not just in public but private schools as well, not just the secular but Christian schools as well. God, in the name of Jesus, because we know there's a spirit over this land trying to take our children, God. There's a spirit over this land trying to rob us of our sons and daughters god in the name of jesus oh god oh god oh god forgive us of our failures forgive us of our failures forgive us lord for staying selfish too long our children hurt for it forgive us lord for pursuing personal goals at the expense of our children forgive us lord but lord we got sense now in the name of jesus and god we want to we want to see this thing reversed oh god we just speak life over our children not just over lord but we speak life into our children we impart your wisdom into our children lord we don't want to impart ourselves because we are broken and we don't want to impart brokenness to them, God. We want to impart that which is perfect. We want to impart that which will keep them when the storms of life come their way, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you for them one by one and name by name, God. You know the home situation, God. You know the children who feel lonely, God. You know the children who feel deserted, God. You know the children who feel unloved, God. Not because they are unloved, they just feel unloved. You know the children who are acting out because there are some parts of their lives that are not just the way they want them to be. God, they're wondering why some people ain't where they ought to be, God. But God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the peace that passes all understanding to fall on these children today, God. So that they not worry about who ain't with them or who ain't active in their lives. Cause them to celebrate who you did put in their lives, God. In the name of Jesus. Cause them to know that they are loved today, God. That they are special today, God. That they are chosen today, God. That they have purpose today, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, I pray for our children, um, some of whom have made bad decisions that are costing them, but Lord, they're still living. We haven't had to deposit their bones in a graveyard. So Lord, if they're living, Lord, they got a chance. God, reach them wherever they are. Speak to that spirit, God. Speak what they won't hear from us, what they won't receive from us, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you today. I thank you today. I thank you today. I thank you today, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for turning a generation around. I thank you, Lord, for scooping our children up, Lord. I thank you, Lord, 
for rescuing them from this demonic attack. I thank you, Lord, for giving them the wherewithal to change their direction in life. I thank you for causing them to know that you are our refuge and you are our strength and you are a very present help in the time of trouble. I thank you. Oh Lord, I finally pray for an awakening among parents. Cause parents to know that a 10 year old ain't grown, a 12 year old ain't grown, 14 year old ain't grown, 16 year old, an 18 year old ain't grown, a 20 year old ain't grown these days. Cause them to know they still got to raise their children. They still have to provide godly examples. They still have to model godliness. And Lord, we commit ourselves to do these things because we know better. We know better. We know better. You've taught us too much. We know better. You've brought us too far. We know better. You've delivered us from too many things. We know better. God, I pray for the salvation of the unsaved, for the reclaiming of the backslider, for the strengthening of the saints. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's bless God.